for you all tonight. We thank God for Pastor Bland, and uh, we're going to go ahead and yield the floor to him. Say amen for him. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Get your Bibles, and let's just go ahead and start. We've been in the book of Acts. We want to stay there. We've made our way to uh, the ninth chapter where Paul is basically um, treated to a visit from Jesus from heaven because uh, Jesus has already been crucified. He's already been resurrected. He's, uh, the day of Pentecost has happened in Acts, the second chapter. The apostles are persecuted. Uh, they choose deacons in Acts, the sixth chapter. One of the deacons, Stephen, uh, does a wonderful recitation of the history of Israel. And the history of Israel is just like our history, a history of rebellion against God. Uh, and uh, at the end, Stephen simply says, you uncircumcised and stiff-necked, you do always resist the Holy Ghost or the Spirit of God. Basically, the Spirit of God is, is God's mind. First Corinthians, the second chapter tells us <clears throat> the way that you know a man is by his spirit. The way that you know God is by God's spirit. God's spirit will uh, convey to you knowledge of God. And so therefore, if we are to live a godly life, then we have to live a spiritual life. And the spiritual life is simply where God is in control and God is directing. Uh, a spiritual life will keep you from being petty. Uh, I, don't, I don't, yeah, I do know. I can't even get it out of my mouth. I want to say I don't know about you, but I know about me, but I do know. Um, at times, it's easier for me to allow the Spirit of God to have control than it is other times. Uh, sometimes, Sister Linda, I really want to be petty. So sometimes I want to give you just what, just what I think you deserve. I want to give it to you. And some in my mind say, I can do it better than you can. I can show you better than I can tell you. But I'm, I'm glad I'm convinced that the best way of life is a spiritual way of life. Paul says in Philippians, the third chapter, he says, we are not of those that have confidence in the flesh. And I, I've been thinking about this, Lady Deborah, and I know y'all have had similar experiences. In my life, because of how trifling I was and because of how devilish I was, there were people who thought that I never would be nothing. I gave them that impression. Just to look at me, that's what, you know, the average person would have thought. But now, what I'm thinking now, Lady Deborah, is those were carnal persons. Because if they had been spiritual people, then they would have understood that God wasn't through with me yet. And I think about the pastor that I had, basically, probably the only pastor that I had, I think that was spiritual, and that was Bishop D.L. Lindsay. And I remember him telling me, he said, son, God got great things for you. Uh, and so then, when I am spiritual, which it sounds like a real spooky word, simply when I am allowing God to be in control, then uh, I will exhibit the characteristics of God. What are the characteristics of God? Give me 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, maybe about the fourth verse, 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians 13. I will turn there myself. The Bible tells us in 1 John, it might be John, John, the first chapter and 13th verse maybe, it said that God is love. Well, if God is love, 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, tells us what love is. And in the fourth verse, the Bible says, it uses the word in the King James of charity, in other ver versions they use love, charity suffers long. And it's kind. When I'm living a spiritual life, then I can uh, give you a benefit of the doubt. You know, you have to hold on. The old people put it like this right here. Just hold on. Yeah. Just, just hold on. But if you react to what's going on right now, a lot of times later on you'll wish to say, I wish I had just, I wish I had left that alone. Because what a difference a day makes. 
What a difference a day makes. You ever just been real messed up, uh, the, even the night before, and you wake up the next morning, you wake up to a new world? And, and here he says that when God is in control of your life, in other words, love is it, it, instead of you. You see, you have to be convinced that all of us are petty. All of us, hurt people hurt people. And we live in a world where, uh, I mean, if, if people just do that. I had a lady who left here. I thought everything was fine. But she left here and, and didn't come back anymore. And I didn't want it to be said, Cricket, that I didn't call her anything. So I called her and I said, well, Mother, it's, you know, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I said, okay then, okay. Well, I've been out in the streets long enough to know when people don't want to be bothered. I know I ain't that much, I ain't that churchy. I, I know what the deal is, you know, and everything, so I'm, I'm cool with it too, you know. I was all right then. But it's been about six or seven years, but she called me about seven times a day until she finally got me, and uh, uh, she need help. You left, you ain't said nothing, you ain't told me nothing or, or whatever, and, and y'all, I'm a real pastor. I love you. I'm going to labor over you. I'm going I'm to not only come see about you, I'm going to come see about your people. I'm going to do, you know what I mean? God put this in me. And you just, you just walk off. <laughs> you just walk off and don't say nothing. Cat, dog, nothing. And, but then, six, seven years later, here you come and whatever. And I gave her the help that I thought, but, but I thought about it. I thought about it. I said, ain't this something? They don't think about you till they want something. And that's, that's just people. And they don't die with a difference between her and me. If God is not operating in my life, I will treat people the same way. I'll treat people the same way. And so I think, brothers, man, you have to become convinced that it's a better life. You know, I think the church got it twisted. They want you to keep coming to church in order to have a bigger church, in order to have this and have that and everything and 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 and, and the pastor to be, to be the biggest pastor around and and you know he wearing alligator shoes and all this stuff here and he got a Cadillac and all that you know that my pastor but but actually what I believe see for what it's about is I believe it's about affecting and changing and improving people's lives I, I think that's the real purpose of the church I got Bible on it because Jesus said that uh, the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and destroy. But I come that you might have life and life more abundantly. And you can't have no abundant life if you ain't got no peace. You can't have no abundant life if you ain't got no money. I've been living long enough to know that money is essential now. Some things ain't going to move without no money. You, you said what you want. You might need to go to the doctor. They're going to want some money. But for, it ain't no doctor that you go to. The first thing they ask you is, do you have an insurance card? They take that insurance card and your ID, and they take a picture. Now you're welcome. We're ready to heal you now. Yeah, but they want to know how they're going to get paid. It's an abundant life. And it always hurt me because it seemed like that you weren't concerned about me. You know, I mean, I know you can't fix me. I know you can't do this, but I expect you to be concerned about, my, about me and my life. And then when I got over here and I found out that Jesus did the saving, that you didn't have to jump up and down and fall all on the floor and snot and, and fast and pray and, and stay out here nine days out of the week and all this right here in order to be saved, that you're simply saved by grace, that by, by through faith. I put my faith in what Jesus did in order to save me, and I'm saved. But now you save, what you're going to do? It's just like getting a job. You got a job, but you still got to work. You still got to, you see? And so it's a different kind of life, Sister Cindy. Now, instead of being operating on what I think, now I'm crucified with Christ, and now Christ works through me. And it sounds very simple, but as I said before, many times I want to do what I want to do. Many times I want to, you know, because this is a cold, cruel world. Cold, cruel world. And I'm glad I don't believe that no more. Talking about if you just treat people right, they'll treat you right. I'm glad I don't believe that no more. Do good and good will come back to you. You know, I need the Lord to hold the reins. Yeah. I, I, I really do, because I mess around and do something. And then later, Deborah and I were talking this morning about this right here, this mouth. It's not saying things. Once you say something, you can't get, bring it back. You, you can't bring it back. And so uh, many of us remember when we was kids, relatives that said things about us. You know what I mean? I, I, I got a friend that said that, she was just happy, joyous, and free as she could be. And when, when the relative would get around, she could dance real good. 
And they would ask her, come on up here and dance for us and everything, you know, and they would dance and clap and everything. Some of them would give a quarter, do like this. To one old jealous auntie, said, well, you sit your little fat self down like that. And it looked like that just killed her. It looked like it just took it and just, just push it down. And so I really hate it when I'm, in the, uh, uh, when I'm out and I see these folks talking to their children. They be cussing them, calling them. That, that hurt me so bad. Don't do, don't do that. That child just now starting out. Don't kill them b before they start. That's the reason cricket. Most of us are the grandparents that, that we just want to take our grandchildren. Say, don't worry about it. You go on, do what you got to do. Give my grandchildren. Let me, let me take care of them. Uh, First Corinthians thirteen four says, uh, cha cha and it's kind, charity, envy if not. These are the things when God is leading my life. This is how I'm going to be. Uh, if God ain't leading my life, I find myself getting mad because you got something I don't have. But when love is, I'm happy for you. Amen. Look like I'm happier than you are that you got it. This thing. But, that's, but love got to be, we can't do this on our own, y'all. God got to be operating in our life. Yeah. And it says, it, it love vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. I won't be this kind of person right here that every time we get to talking, you can't hardly say nothing because I got to tell you about what I'm doing. You ever talk to people like that? They probably be a conversation, but you can't get a word in, and no matter what you said, you know, it, it could be so scented that your daddy died that day or something. You said, you know, my, my, my dad, my dad, he gone and everything. And they said, mm-hmm. Well, you know what? My car is messed up, right? And, and, and you just want to have the, can I have a day? Can, can this right here just be, but I'm saying, y'all, I, I don't fool myself that I'm any different than anybody else. If yeah. God don't work through me, I'll find myself. You ever done that? The same thing that you uh, are criticizing other people about, you find yourself doing the same thing. Yeah. And I, I know, I, this one thing I know is that can't nobody help you until you can see yourself. Okay, and then you can't see yourself. You can't see yourself. God got, you got to humble yourself and hear somebody else. Because we, we rationalize and justify our behavior and everything. We got an excuse and a reason why we do. But when I can just hear you, if I, if I can listen to you. The, the Bible says in verse uh, 5, it does not behave itself unseemly. I will cut up, I cut up sideways. I will, I cut up sideways. And then they don't do you no good talking about them. I thought you was a pastor. Ooh, I'm really mad then. You, you done brought the devil out in me right then. Uh, uh, seek if not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoice if not in iniquity, but rejoice if in the truth. Bear if all things, believe if all things, hope if all things, endure if all things. Charity never faileth. Turn back to Acts, uh, Acts 10. Uh, yeah, Acts 10. God never fails. God never fails. When I let God have his way yeah. in my life, I can weather the storm. I can weather the storm. And y'all, I'm telling you, there's some storms out here. You might think that you're doing, you might think you're doing bad, but I'm telling you, it's, the devil is loose. The, the devil is loose. I was here Sunday morning, I got a telephone call, and uh, then, you know, it was about uh, uh, something that had happened. A lady had shot a man and, and, and whatever, and you know, and my heart goes out to the family because the man died. My heart goes out to her because now she's facing murder charges, you see? But Lady Deborah, I, I, I looked at that. They, they Sunday morning, uh, they got about to be in Sunday morning just like we did. But now one of them ended up dead in an hour or so and she ended up in, in jail about a murder. And you and I got up and we was able to come to church and we was able to give God the praise and everything. And I just don't want it to be where I think, you know, it's a bad thing when you start thinking what you deserve. That you deserve for your life to be like this. You deserve to have a car. You deserve for you and your family to get along. You deserve for your children to be all right or whatever. No, if it can happen to somebody else, it can happen to me. And so I can't do nothing but thank the Lord. Lord, I thank you. God, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. The old saints used to say, the more the Lord bless you, the sweeter you ought to get. 
You ought not get lifted up. You ought not get to thinking that you this and that because you got maybe more than other people got. I go to criticizing other folks. They should have been at church like we was at. Well, if God hadn't to give you a little bit of sense, if God hadn't to give you a little bit of sense, and the thing about it, with all your sins now, it don't take that much right there for you to flip and you be down there in jail yourself. Amen. You be down there yourself. And so I, I, I'm just praising and magnifying God for just a chance, for an opportunity. He, he has given me opportunity. And the thing, Tara, is I don't deceive myself. I'm not going to make no hundred. I'm not going to make no hundred. God going to keep me where I don't have confidence in my flesh. Because, you see, I can get to doing too good and I think I'm good instead of good is working through me. And so he says, uh, love never fails. Look at Acts the 10th chapter. Now, after that Paul is converted, after Paul uh, is called by uh, Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, after that Paul understands who God is, he is uh, Jehovah Jireh, he is Jesus Christ, then we go to Acts the 10th chapter, and Paul kind of, you have to follow uh, the Bible in times, it looked like Lady Deborah, they have parentheses. They talking about one thing, then all of a sudden they go to talking about something else. And that's the reason you have to study. You can't just read it like it's a novel where you go from right here to right there. You have to study it and you have to rightly divide the word of truth so that you can find out what's going on, who being talked to. And that's the reason we have Bible study together so we can learn together. Acts the 10th chapter. Acts 10. The Bible says here that there was uh, a certain man in Caesarea named Cornelius. Now while we go from Paul over here to uh, Cornelius, you got two characters in the book of Acts. You got Peter and then you got Paul. Peter represents a ministry to the circumcision or the ministry to Israel. Paul represents the ministry to the uncircumcision, the Gentiles, those that were not God. Remember, we're talking about a transition. We're talking about a transition from law to grace, from law to grace. Paul tells us in Romans, the third chapter, so many things Paul explains about what was going on, what's, ha what's happening behind the scenes. You, you ever, you, you, you ever uh, knew something, but then you got to talking to somebody who knew more than you did, and they told you, said, baby, this is what was going on with that whole, that whole thing there. When we first started Cocaine Anonymous in uh, Little Rock, that was a split. Man, we was going beautiful. We was, man, we was filling that place out. It was maybe over 100 people up there. People were getting sober and all that. And then there was a split where half people went with this guy and half people went over there with that guy. But man, it was at least 15 years later till I found, I thought it was about an argument. It was 15 years later, Cricket, till I found out it was about a woman that had big hips. Thank you, Jesus. You don't know. You just, a lot of times, you don't know what's behind. And that's the reason that, that it's just good to hold your peace. Because yeah. you, you really don't know what you're talking about. And this right here will get you in a whole lot of trouble. You wasn't even in it. You wasn't in it. But this right here, this right here. And the, the devil and I always say, I'm not saying nothing because when I say something, then it, it, all you're going to hear is about what I say. You see? When I first started pastoring, uh, a person told me this right here. He said, don't never get with one member talking about another. He said, don't do that. And I, I, I paid attention to him too. I thought that was wise counsel. He says, a devout man, this is Cornelius, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. He was a devout man. He feared God. His house did. He gave alms to the people. He prayed in God. He was a Gentile. He was, out, he was not a part of uh, God's people. Give me uh, Ephesians 2, 3, 12 and 13. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, 12. It's not working. I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Just turn to it. <laughs> Ephesians 2. Mm -mm. 
Ephesians 2 and 11, here the Bible says, Wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. I never made any difference when I read in the Bible between Gentiles and Jews. I just threw everybody in a lump together and clearly the Bible says that there was a time when God was not dealing with Gentiles. God was dealing with the nation of Israel. Somebody said that's not fair, but he's God and God is sovereign. And God know what he doing. You, many, when I was in the army, uh, they used to get the plans together before the maneuvers and they would have it at the CP, which was the command post. They didn't invite everybody in there. They did it on a basis of need to know. If, if you needed to know, then you was there. If you didn't, it wasn't nothing for you to do, but when we came out to do what we said do. And so that's faith. Faith is simply taking God at his word. You trying to figure out, well, why is God doing this or why does God do it that way and whatever. Who are you to question God? It's like sometimes old folks will tell us, son, I don't forgot more than you'll ever know. I don't, so we really, it's above our pay grade and it's out of our uh, un little understanding to try to figure God out. It's for me to take God at his word, to believe God. I have to trust God that God knows what he's doing. So God was only dealing with the nation of Israel. And here in Ephesians 2 and 11 say, you need to remember that in time past you were Gentiles in the flesh who was called the uncircumcision. And remember in Genesis 17, God made a covenant with Abraham where he says, every child on the eighth day you're supposed to circumcise him. And if he will not take, take a circumcision, then he's supposed, he should be put out of the camp. He's not a part. And, but now remember this right here. That was nothing. Because you take a child and circumcise him, do nothing for his heart. So this was just a sign or a symbol that you belong to me. But they were told to do this, and those that did it, they honored God through faith because faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. So God said, do it, so they did it. But those other people, which were called dogs, which were on the other side, were Gentiles, was us. We did not have the same right that the nation of Israel did. We said that God don't have a respected person, but he did in time past. Look what the Bible says. By that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. Now can you see how that the Jews would think that they was more? We God's people. We be Abraham's seed. We're no children of fornication. We're Abraham's children. They were prideful in their religion, just like folks are today. They're prideful about their circumcision. They're prideful about their churches. They're prideful about their order of service. They're prideful about how long they have been a member of that church. They are prideful. But then Paul says in, in Galatians, the sixth chapter, he said, God forbid that I should glory in anything but the cross. Because Paul got the revelation and he was, he was just as bad. If you read Timothy, he said, have you heard about my conversation in the past? How that in the Jews' religion I excel more than, than many? He said, but God showed him that circumcision didn't mean nothing. That none of that meant nothing. And he said, and we know that no man is justified by the law. And so Paul says, I'm only going to glory in the cross by which the world is crucified to me and I'm, and I'm crucified to it. I'll only gross, I will only glory in what he did and not in myself. You see, that's man's problem. Man wants to glory in himself. He want, and, and, and it's a recipe for failure. It's a recipe for failure. But people think, you see, I know when I had first started making a little money, and I'm gonna tell you what, if it's anything that'll make a fool out you more than money, it got to be a woman, or a man. If it's anything that'll, that'll won't make a fool, that money go to your head. Come, come, I can't paint shake your I do this right here. Look, I'm gonna tell you something. The person that said money won't change you, they broke. They don't know. They, they don't know. Our old pastor used to say, look like the sun come up a little brighter when you got some money. You ever woke up and realized you had some money and everything, you felt a little better? People that got money don't watch as much TV. 
They got things to do, places to go. You know, I, I believe I'll take a trip. I believe, I might, I don't think I'm gonna buy me something right here, but you ain't got no money, they don't even cross your mind. He says here, remember now, in time past, look at this, good teaching, good teaching. See, you need to remember, and many times we have to be called back into remembrance. You see what, me and Lady Deborah, we was talking about somebody this morning and everything. Oh yeah, we, I was talking about how, how you, how you, how you fall in love and want a man ain't got no job and doing this right here and all that and then, I, then something just, you know, the spirit came to me and I said, well baby, they couldn't tell you away from me. I ain't had no job or nothing. I was drunk. And, you see what I'm saying? It kind of brought me back to reality when I, thank you Jesus. He said, remember you, you, was, you wasn't nobody. You was called on second circumcision by the circumcision. Look at verse 12. Then at that time, you are without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. God was dealing only with Israel. God's protection was over Israel. God was the God of Israel. Many times he would say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, what I had been told previous before coming to MCF, I had always taken that under myself. They talking about me. They talking about the church, but they were not talking about me. You know what, when I realized when I'm talking to somebody and they talk plain, I hate folk that talk in riddles and, and all this kind of stuff. They talk to me plain. Make it plain where I can understand it. When I take God at his word, the Bible no longer becomes a mystery. God said what he meant and he meant what he said. He was dealing with Israel at that time because he called Abraham and he said, Abraham, he said, through you, all nations of the earth are going to be blessed. But they first had to come through Israel. But what happened? Israel rejected their king. And when Israel rejected their king, they were set aside and that gave an opportunity for God to bless the Gentiles. Once they lost their place, then God uh, took a gospel that was based entirely upon what he had done upon the cross, not upon no commandments, not upon no, no sacraments, no ordinances, no nothing. It was all based on him. And y'all, that's what man lost in the garden. Everything was about God before Eve got a man of her own, before Eve, and then, you know, it would not have happened if, if Adam hadn't have taken from it and partake, because Adam, God, let, Adam was in charge. Man is the head of woman. And so when, when Adam, and the worst thing in the world is a, is a jelly back man. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you. And it's so easy for us to be jelly back for y'all because we're just trying to get along with you. We just, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> y'all yeah, yeah. think we're scared of you. In fact, we're scared of you. We just, we can't take too much, y'all. Okay, baby. All right. Oh, oh, okay. And so Adam, when Adam did that, then it wasn't about God anymore. It was about what I think about it. And that's the reason you got all these denominations. Because everybody live according to what they think. They think. And you can show people the word of God. God said this right here. Well, my pastor says such and such. You see? But God's word, the Bible, he says, I've exalted my word. My word is settled forever. God never going to back up on his word, Cricket. God never going to say, well, I misspoke when I said that. I, I re No, 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 no. Man, God not a man that he lied, not a son of man that he should have to repent or to change his mind and everything. That's one of the things in the law. They have what they call stare decisis. And that what that is, is they mean that this is precedent. You see, in order for you to, to navigate out here in society, you have to be able to count on what the law is. If the law change every day and everything, you don't know what, you see what I'm saying? So when the courts begin to look at the law, they have to look at, well, what is the law? What, what's the, the precedent? What, what, what has already been set? And then you have to have a good reason to change. The law moves so, so slowly, just like a glacier or something. It doesn't move. And the reason is, is so you have stability. Well, you have stability when you understand that God said what he meant, and he meant what he said. And so God had uh, made Israel the, 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 the apple of his eye. And so he says here that you were strangers from the covenants of promise. 
You see, we were not a part of the covenant. A covenant is an agreement. A covenant is a contract. Sometimes people uh, uh, be married to somebody, and, and, you know, like me and Deborah, we married, and I go out and I make a contract to buy a car, something like that, and then I don't pay for it. Well, if you don't know no better, they'll try to, creditors try to come and try to make you pay for it. You, and, but you know, you got to have enough sense to know, I'm, sir, I did not enter into a contract with you. I didn't promise you I was gonna pay you no money. That was him, he did that. And so, when we take Israel's covenants for ourselves, then we, then we go in error. You see, God is truth. If he's anything, God is the truth. They said Paul Pierce was the truth, but he ain't the truth. God is the truth. And so if God says something, he mean it. If God said no, no, no disease shall come now your dwelling, God meant that. If God had a, had a Lady Deborah, if God had meant for that to be between him and us, we wouldn't have to wear no mask. But because it wasn't, you see what I'm saying? But now because if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, then you start... Uh, condemning and they had me so down y'all they had me so down it's a bad thing when you're down on yourself I promise you it is and that's the reason I won't even be around folks folks that make me feel negative make me feel some kind of way folks make where you try to bring up them old feelings and everything I just leave I just go I can't I can't leave I can't live like that but what they are saying well you just ain't got enough faith <sighs> well, for faith, faith is about believing what God said and God said it but Paul explains we were not a part of that covenant. We were uh, strangers uh, from the covenants of promise. Then he said, having no hope. He had no hope. And if a person is not connected to God, they don't have no hope, y'all. They, they don't have no hope. I don't care what you got. And most of us have lived long enough to know that whatever you got is fleeting. Things are changing, y'all. My, my baby sister just finished her last day at Little Rock Central High School. My baby sister has retired from teaching school. My baby sister. I got a son that's only seven or eight years from retiring. Let's more me retiring. I got a baby, I, my son. Time is steadily moving. And so you trying to grasp, that's reading the old people used to tell us, said, wear this world like a loose garment. So baby, you, can't, you didn't bring nothing here, and you ain't going to take nothing away. You don't take nothing away. And so the best thing you can do while you're here, it's not brain surgery. Let God have his way. And y'all know I ain't against having stuff. I, you know, I ain't against having stuff. I, I'm one of the happiest Negroes and everything. My wife be just grinning for no reason. I'm not lying. Y'all think that she ain't from the people. Y'all, she be at home and just cry. What you grinning about? I ain't got nothing to be sad about. You, you see? But the thing about it is, well, uh, godliness with contentment is great gain. Don't, you, you, when you cut God out of you, you ain't got no joy. You got all the stuff that you ever wanted, but you ain't got no joy. But God can come in with a little bit. Thank you, Jesus. And he can make your existence, your life, so, 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 but he can give your life meaning. It's very easy to live a meaningless life. It's very easy for your life not to have no purpose, for you just to feel like, why am I here? God is not going to have his place. And so he says, look what he says in 13. That was time past. But then he says, this is what you call right division, rightly dividing the word of God. There was a time past, it's a but now, and there's ages to come. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Just as simple as that. Then the Bible says right here, he said, but now. And we're living in the but now, right now. We're not back when up under that system where Israel was, and they try to take you in that now. But to myself, we, we, we need to raise money for Israel. Look, they own ABC, CBS, NBC, and everything, black folks ain't hardly got a school. And you sending money to Israel. And the reason is, is because you're ignorant. You're ignorant. Don't mean you're stupid. You're ignorant because you don't know no better. You ever done something and then come back later on and say, you know what, if I had known better, Amen. I wouldn't have done that. You wasn't stupid, you just didn't know. 
And that's the reason, but the thing about our people is, is that when you, when you try to sit them down and teach them something, they want you to holler at them and work on their emotion and whatever. You got to work on my emotions. If, if you teach me good enough where I got a good life, I'm already got emotions. I don't need no organ or nothing. I'll run around the neighborhood. Thank you, Jesus. Because I'm tired. We used to use it. Y'all excuse this right here. Y'all excuse this. I know. But, you know, we used to say when you messed up and everything, you're behind out. And that's the way I used, that's the way I live life. Every time I looked up, every time I looked up here, my behind is out. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that. And so I want God to lead my life and everything. And cricket is so easy. It's so easy. You get to following the wrong people. And then certainly you get to following your man. And I'm just begging, and I'm pleading with God. I said, God, you know, take this stubbornness out of me and let me humble myself. Well, you can help me. I have suffered enough, y'all. I've suffered enough. I, I know where you, I know where I can take me, and I don't want to go there no more. Not saying I'm not going to go, but I just I don't want to go. He says, but now, in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, how do you get in Christ? The Bible says, by one spirit are we all baptized into the body of Christ. What that means, Tari, is, is that I ain't got to be the pastor's pet. <sighs> I ain't got to give you my light money. You ain't got to like me. You know, you don't have to like me. My saying, Friday, is there's seven billion people in the world. You know, you find you somebody you like. Find you somebody you like. He said, but in Christ, how did I get in Christ? The Bible says, that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. From my heart, I stopped believing in me. And I believe that what Christ did by coming and bleeding and dying upon Calvary's cross, I believe that his blood was payment for the sin of the whole world, past, present, and future. He paid the whole sin debt. There is no sin debt anymore. He paid it. Hey, you see, you don't encourage somebody to come up here and ask God to forgive you. You already forgiven, but you got to believe it. If you don't believe it, it's just like a person who was born and they switched them, and you actually are of raw blood, you actually are heir to the throne and everything, but you'll never get it unless you believe it. And until you believe it and believe it in your heart. And the Bible says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And it started a long time ago when Abraham uh, was, 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 was uh, told that his Sarah would have a child for him. And he said, how can uh, I have this child seeing that, that, that we both are too old to have a child? Give, give me Romans 4. Romans 4. But before you go there, well, you already did. But anyway, he said, but now we are made nigh by the blood. We were brought near. Now, go back to that. Just one minute. I want to show you something because this is a great era of the church. And the reason, brother, the reason, you know what? I like in a car for them to have that, what they call it, baby? What we were looking for in the car on the way here. Blind spot detectors. Because, you know, it's one thing, I'm old and I'm scary. And, you know, I, I don't trust myself. When I get ready to move over and everything, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, I'm looking around and whatever. And I like that blind spot detector because it tells you if anything is coming this way uh, or anything is coming that way. But I was telling Lady Deborah, I said, I hate it ain't one on this car. She said, baby, it's one on here. You just ain't read and don't know. You see? And what you don't know real hurt you. And so the church have by believing that they are part of a covenant, we're not even a part of the new covenant. And the Bible clearly says who God made the covenant with. I have shown Sister Cynthia people that. I said, show me here where God didn't make it with Israel, made it with the church. They can't find it, but they still don't believe it because they've been taught it so long. But you know what? That's them. I'm asking God, God, when you speak, help me to believe it. Help me to call everybody else a liar. I don't care who I make mad. That's one thing about it. Y'all already know that. I don't care who I make mad and uh, whatever. And it's, it's just like if you know that your lights, you need lights. You know that your family need, need food and everything. Do you care who get mad at you because you're going to work? You don't care. And I feel the same way about God. It's God, you've been too good to me. 
God, you done took a fool and made it look like he had some sins. I ain't got nobody. It looked like it. You see? You did this, God. I know who did it. Because I tried my best to have something. I tried my best to make my mama. I, I got tired of making my mama cry. I did, but I couldn't stop it. And when I, when, I, when I yielded, when I submitted, when I gave up, God came in and did for me what I couldn't do for myself. And who am I going to listen at? You know, your word, I respect you, I love everything, but you, your word do not take precedent over God. Amen. Over what God said. Uh, what, what did I tell you? Ephesians 2, take me back to where we was, two, two, baby, 2.14. Real quick, got three minutes. <laughs> He says, uh, no, no, go back, 13. 13, go back up. Yeah, he said, but now in Christ Jesus. See, that's where all our blessings are, Sister Kadia Pierce Foster. All of our blessings are in Christ. Our blessings is not in the church of God in Christ. Our blessing is not in Manasseh Christian Fellowship. Our blessing is not in circumvent. Our blessing is not in us marching around. But our blessing is not in anything that we do. Our blessing are in Christ. Outside of Christ, we are we, we just like anybody else. But when I acknowledge, 1 Corinthians 1 30 says, he has become our righteousness, our wisdom, our sanctification, our redemption, everything. But they tell you, you got to do this and wear this certain kind of clothes and, and you can't listen to this kind of music and to be sanctified or whatever. But the Bible says that he is our sanctification. He is everything to us. He has made, he has made because we are in him. And we take that by faith, not by what we see. Because many times in your life, you, what you see ain't going to look like nothing like Jesus. It's not going to look. I'm going to tell you what. When the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. It, there's going to come a time, beloved, for you and for me, that we just going to have to hold on. Ain't no use of calling pastor. Ain't no use of doing, doing, doing nothing. You're you going to have to hold on. I'm not going to be able to help you. Yeah. Ain't nobody going to be able to help you. Like the old lady said, them people knew what they was talking about. They said, if the Lord don't help me, yeah. I ain't going to be able to stand the storm. Yeah. Cricket, I, I think about you. Your life going along fine and everything. All of a sudden, Danny got sick. Next thing, Danny did. He gone. You see what I'm saying? And then, you know, we never ceased to, you know, we didn't say it or whatever, but that lady, Deborah, I never ceased to stop praying for you. And you know, need, you need a spiritual, you need a cover, you need somebody who interested in you, not in what you can do. And that's what I got tired of for in church. All you interested in is what I can do for the church. You know, I don't care if the church get another pew or not. But my, church, my house is tore up. We can't stand one another. God got to come in, I'm telling you. You know, you can only fake all so long. And then don't make me feel bad because I can't stand who I'm married to. I just can't stand them if I wish it was different. But I don't like them. All they got to do is breathe. It make me mad. Come on, y'all. This is the only thing I wanted. This, I just want, come on, don't, don't make me feel bad about being me. I can't be you. Me telling me about what's going on in your house because you ain't know my line, no way. He says here, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Yeah. The blood. That means it ain't got nothing to do with me. But it got everything to do with my faith. No wonder he says that without faith it's impossible to please him. So if I believe you, then your faith is going to bring me up out of this ditch. Your faith, gonna, my, my faith, it's going to transform me because you already did the work. But you just, ex you, I must believe God. The Bible said that he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Give me just a few more minutes. If, uh, Romans, the fourth chapter, we're going to look at something here. Romans 4. Uh, go down. <clears throat> Stop right there at eight. The Bible says here, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. In other words, your sin have been taken care of, so then therefore the sin won't be imputed. How can this happen? He said, cometh this blessing 
upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision. For we said that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Before he ever got circumcised, he was reckoned as righteous. And look, and he says here, uh, uh, let's go down to verse, uh, uh, okay, go on down. First, go back up to 14. He says, for if they which be of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect because the law work of wrath for where no law is, there no is transgression. Verse 16, therefore it is of faith that it might be grace. You're saved by grace through your faith. You're saved by what you believe me. God gave me, you know what, when I used to smoke dope and stuff like that, I, me being an old schoolboy and everything, I was scary. And so I used to send a gangster to go get my dope and everything, but it always come up short. And so I got tired of that and I, I got the middle man out of it. Well, when I came here and I learned the truth, it knocked the middle man out. I ain't got to go to no bishop, no apostle, or nothing like that. I, what I get, I get it by grace. In other words, it's a gift. God, I ain't got to do nothing for it. It's by grace, but I access it, Lady Deborah, by my faith. If you believe God, I'm going to tell you something. I've seen people come out of the projects. I've seen people come out of drugs, alcohol. I've seen people come out of abject. I've seen people who spent 25 years in prison, but because through grace and, and, and having faith in one God, they went back and worked in the prison helping other people. I've seen this with my own eye. And so he says here that to the end, the promise might be true to all seed, not only to them, of the law, and he said, uh, before him whom, at, um, verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Father of many nations. Abraham, I make you the father of many nations because I'm going to base your blessings upon your ability to believe me. I'm, I'm going to base your blessing upon the ability to believe me. They Deborah looking at her wife. I know Deborah. I'm, I'm getting ready to leave alone. But he says here, who quickeneth the dead. You see, it's easy to believe what you see, but that's not faith. I got to make it where you don't see nothing in order for your faith to be activated. Because the Bible says that that which is not seen, that which is seen is not faith. And he says that you got to believe God who quickeneth the dead, that which ain't no hope for, quicken if the dead, and call it those things which be not as though they were. Look at verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. I've got to quit looking at what I have, who I am, uh, who won't hear me, who won't listen. I've got to let God be true and let everybody be a lie. He didn't consider, his body was dead. Ain't no baby coming out of me and you. But the Bible says that he against hope, he hoped. He had that much respect and confidence and trust in God that even though both of our bodies is dead, I can't help it. God said we're gonna have a baby. That's faith, y'all. Yeah. And that's why he is the father of our faith. And he said, he staggered not. He said, when he was about 100 years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Y'all, you got to believe God. You got to hold on. Yeah. It's rough, y'all. I'm not the one to be faking and acting like everything is wonderful and whatever, but God said. No, make no difference what the faith was. But God said. Got to hold on to the promises. Y'all, I preached here for two years and looked like wasn't nothing going to happen. Looked like, man, there just, just wasn't nobody coming. Things wasn't there. But we was happy. We was happy and everything. And I can remember Sister Cordelia Foster. I was... Uh, I was showering, and God told me, said, make no difference how things get. I mean, I mean, things were, I mean, it was rough. Here I am two years in, uh, I got the file bankruptcy, 
I'm going into bankruptcy court right there with the law other lawyers and everything. But I said something about that woman right there. She walked right in there with me, friend, with her head up. It was a whole lot easier because, you see, she didn't walk away. She walked with me yeah. through, through the bad. That's where you can't tell me nothing bad about her. I know her. I know. She tired. She tried and she tested and everything. And all of this is going on. And God spoke to me while I was in this shower. And God said, said, boy, I guess he's talking our language. He's talking Elaine language. He said, boy, he said, you're going to go down there to that church no matter what happened. The tears start coming out of my eyes. I said, yes, sir. I said, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I ain't got nowhere else to go. I can't turn back. Yeah. It is the best I ever live right here. If don't know, if it don't change, I got to I got to stick with you. And that was around Mother's Day. And Mother's Day, a lot of people, some people came, and it just people just start coming. Beautiful people, y'all start coming. Folks that I never would have thought that would come and and be a part of what we was doing. And God just start blessing. But you got to hold on, y'all. You got to believe God past whatever whatever it look like the god that you serve don't lie god have not he's not his promise he's not short on his promise his arms are not short let me finish this right here he says uh and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness i guess god said you know what if you believe me no matter what then you all right with me you all right with me if you can believe me no matter what you're going through no matter what it look like you all right with me and he says, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and he was raised again for our justification. Give the Lord a hand. Yeah. Come on, God. You're welcome. God bless you. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, honey. So um, I, I just have a couple of options.